Hare Krishna, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, Bhagavad Gita class. <clears throat> we'll just do a short kirtan before we start. Jaya Rad Amadhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Rad Amadhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Gopi Janavala Giri Vare Dari Jaya Gopi Janaval Rava Giri Vare Dari Yashoda Nanda Nabraja Janaranda Yashoda Nanda Nabraja Janaranda Yamuna Tira Vanachari, Unachari, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada. Jaya, Jaya Prabhupada, Prabhupada. Bravo pa jaya jaya bravo pa Okay Hare Krishna everybody so today we're reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is chapter number 6 in text 40 Shri Bhagavan Vacha Harta Naiveha Namutra Vinasastasya Vidyate Nahi Kalyana Grid Kaschid Durgatim Tata Gachati Shri Bhagavan Vacha Harta Naiveha Namutra Vinasastasya Vidyate Nahi Kalyana Grid Kaschid Durgatim Tata Gachati Shri Bhagavan Vacha Harata Naivaha Namutra Vinashasta Sivijate Nahi Kalyana Kritasjid Durga Tim Tatagachiti So we have the uh, uh, word for word translation Shri Bhagavan Vacha The Supreme Personality of Godhead said Harata O son of Prita, na eva, never is it so, iha, in this material world, na, never, amutra, in the next life, vinashaha, destruction, tasya, his, vidyate, exists, na, never, he, certainly, kalyana krit, one who is engaged in auspicious activities. Kaschit, anyone. Durgatim, to degradation. Tata, my friend. Gachati, goes. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The Supreme Personality of God had said, O son of Britta, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities, does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5.17, Sri Narada Muni instructs Vyasadeva as follows. Tyaktva svadharman charanam bujam hare vajam apakto tapate tato yadi Yatra kva valvajim abudamishikim 
Kovatsu apto vajitam svadharmataha. If someone gives up all material prospects and takes complete shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is no degradation in any way. On the other hand, a non devotee may fully engage in his occupational duties, yet not gain anything. For material prospects, there are many activities, both scriptural and customary. A transcendentalist is supposed to give up all material activities for the sake of spiritual advancement in life, Krishna consciousness. One may argue that by Krishna consciousness, one may attain the highest perfection if it is completed. But if one does not attain such a perfectional stage, then he loses both materially and spiritually. It is enjoined in the scriptures that one has to suffer the reaction for not executing prescribed duties. Therefore, one who fails to discharge transcendental activities properly becomes subjected to these reactions. The Bhagavatam assures the unsuccessful transcendentalists that there need be no worries. Even though he may be subject to the reaction for not perfectly executing his prescribed duties, still he is not a loser because auspicious Krishna consciousness is never forgotten and one so engaged will continue to be so even if he is low born in his next life. On the other hand, one who simply follows the prescribed duties need not necessarily attain auspicious results if he is lacking in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so the purport may be understood as follows. This is an explanation of this term at the top, which said um, auspicious activities. Here, Kalyana Krit, one who is engaged in auspicious activities. So this last part of the purport is an explanation of this term. The purport may be understood as follows. Humanity may be divided into two sections, namely regulated and non-regulated. Those who are engaged simply in bestial sense gratifications without knowledge of their next life or spiritual salvation belong to the non-regulated section. And those who follow the principles of prescribed duties in the scriptures are classified amongst the regulated section. So Srila Prabhupada was uh, talking about that in this morning's uh, Bhag Srimad Bhagavatam class in Vrindavan, if you were listening to that. He was talking about those who are non-regulated uh, the deities and those who are regulated are the devatas. Mm. The non-regulated section, both civilized and non-civilized, educated and non-educated, strong and weak, are full of animal propensities. Their activities are never auspicious because while enjoying animal propensities of eating, sleeping, defending and mating, they perpetually remain in material existence which is always miserable. On the other hand, those who are regulated by scriptural injunctions and who thus rise gradually to Krishna consciousness certainly progress in life. Those who are following the path of auspiciousness can be divided into three sections. Namely one, the followers of scriptural rules and regulations who are enjoying material prosperity. Those who are number two, those who are trying to find ultimate liberation from material existence. And number three, those who are devotees in Krishna consciousness. Those who are following the rules and regulations of scriptures for material happiness may be further divided into two classes. Those who are fruit of workers and those who desire no fruit for sense gratification. Those who are after fruit of results for sense gratification may be elevated to a higher standard of life, even to the higher planets. But still, because they are not free from material existence, they are not following the truly auspicious path. The only, the only auspicious activities are those which lead one to liberation. Any activity which is not aimed at ultimate self-realization or liberation Okay. 
<clears throat> Any activity which is not aimed at ultimate self-realization or liberation from material body concept of life is not at all auspicious. Activity in Krishna consciousness is the only auspicious activity and one who voluntarily accepts all bodily discomforts for the sake of making progress on the path of Krishna consciousness can be called a perfect transcendentalist under severe austerity. And because the Eightfold Yoga system is directed towards the ultimate realization of Krishna consciousness, such practice is also auspicious. And no one who is trying his best in this matter need fear degradation. Om Jnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshuran Malitam Yena Tasme Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sva Parantikam Vandayaham Sri Guruho Sri Yuta Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrijatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Purijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Srivisa Kanvitam Stra He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Vando Chagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vishabhanu Sutte Devi Ranamami Hari Priye Pancha Kalpa Turupyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Paditanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Prajarine Nirvishesa Shunyavadi Paschatya Dishatarane Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gajadhara Siva Sadi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sri Bhagavanu, oh, Sri Bhagavanu Vacha, Parta Naiveha Namutra, Vinashas Tasya Vijite, Nahi Kalyana Krit Kaschit, Durgatim Tata Gachiti. The Supreme Personality of God, he had said, O son of Krita, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction, destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. So this is an interesting verse. Um, Srila Prabhupada explains in a previous verse, I think, let me just check. When Arjuna begins asking these questions, that comes in verse uh, 637. Um, it's explained uh, that uh, Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport that Arjuna wants to be assured of Krishna's promise in the second chapter. So in the second chapter, <clears throat> what they're talking about is verse number 240. Neha bikrama naso sti, pratyavayo navijate, stvalpya asya siddhamasya, trayato mahato bayat. In this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution, and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. So Arjuna was asking, what is the destination of an unsuccessful transcendentalist? who in the beginning takes to the process of self-realization with faith, but who later desists due to worldly mindless, mind, mindedness and does not attain perfection in mysticism. So Arjuna was worried. 
Um, he's just described how um, Krishna has described this process of yoga, of meditation on the Supreme. And Arjuna has, has come back and said, but meditation is extremely difficult. Controlling the mind is very difficult. So what happens if I, if I want to start this path and then I fail? Haven't I lost out because I wasn't performing my duties? So therefore I've lost materially and I've lost this perfection, perfectional stage. I haven't attained it because it's so difficult that I might get lost. So this in the second chapter, this verse, I was just referring to this verse, Srila Prabhupada, um, in the purport, quotes this very same verse that's in today's purport from Srimad Bhagavatam 1570. If someone gives up his occupational duties and works in Krishna consciousness, and then falls down on, a, on account of not completing his work, what loss is there on his part? And what can one gain if one performs his material activities perfectly? So Prabhupada there says, there's a, also this Christian saying, what profit a man if he gain the whole world, yet suffer the loss of his eternal soul? So Krishna in this verse 240, He's saying in this endeavor, there is no loss and diminution. He explains in the purport that even if you only make a little advancement, only 1% advancement, then next time you will start at 2%. So it protects you from this dangerous type of fear. And this dangerous type of fear is of losing this chance of getting out of the cycle of birth and death. Uh, at the end of the purport, Prabhupada says, uh, material activities and their results end up with the body, but work in Krishna consciousness carries a person again to Krishna consciousness, even after the loss of the body. At least one is sure to have a chance in the next life of being born as a human being, either in the family of a great cultured Brahmana or rich, rich aristocratic, family, aristocratic family, that will give one further chance for elevation. That is the unique quality of work done in Krishna consciousness. So Arjuna asked this question and he's suggesting that if one is unsuccessful, he might just get completely lost. And he, he gives the analogy of a riven cloud, a cloud that breaks off from a big cloud. And if it doesn't rejoin another cloud, it simply gets blown away by the wind. Okay, so we just try and go through this. No, as I, yeah, we'll go first to another point in Srimad Bhagavatam. See if this will come up here. Because in the in the, the second canto, okay, that's not working. Sorry, it's too slow. Do it from here again.
Okay, so in this second canto, uh, the first first canto, second chapter, six verse, and and the next few verses after that, explain about the position of our prescribed duties. So one, two, six. Savai pum samparo dharo yato bhakti radokshate ahai tokya pratihata yayat me supersedity. The supreme occupation dharma for all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. So here it's explained that the actual real dharma is to work for the satisfaction of uh, the Lord, to come to a loving devotional service. And if we go for the next... Uh, Let's go back here. Some verses after that. So this is one, two, six. By rendering, number seven, by rendering devotional service unto the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna, one immediately acquires, uh, acquires causeless knowledge and detachment to the world. The occupational duties, this one we should look at. Dharma svanushtitapum sham vishvak saina kadasuya not padayin yadiratim, shrama eva hi kevalam. The occupational duties a man performs according to his own position are only so much useless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the message of the personality of Godhead. Then all occupational engagements are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed for material gain. So this we'll come back to when we come back to the purport of today's verse, which we are still is explaining in the purport, the difference between acting for material gain and acting for, for ultimate liberation. Furthermore, according to the sages, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification. Life's desires should be never directed towards sense gratification. One should only desire a healthy life or self-preservation, since a human being is meant for inquiring into the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goals of one's works. Now, this one I wanted to come to, number 13 also, is another important verse for us. Atta pumbet dvija shreshta, varana shrama vibhaga shaha, svanushti tasya dharmasya, samsadim aritoshana. O oh, best amongst the twice born, it is therefore concluded that the highest perfection one can achieve by discharging the duties prescribed of one's occupation, according to the caste divisions and orders of life, is to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this gives us a hint towards uh, this purport that we're going to go through now for this verse today, how a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities. So a transcendentalist is one who's, uh, Prabhupada gives the definition, who's not, who's, a, who's not aspiring for material sense enjoyment and engaged in auspicious activities. So Prabhupada is very clear about this activities. Prescribed duties alone is not the definition of um, auspicious activities because the karmi is not actually auspicious. So let's go back to this purport. Hmm. So straight after this quote from Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada says, for material prospects, there are many activities, both scriptural and customary. Um, so scriptural includes um, even the, the descriptions of yagyas and all that sort of things that Grihastas are supposed to undergo. And customary is what's handed down and what are your duties and according to your family, earning, living, and that sort of thing. A transcendentalist is supposed to give up all material activities for the sake of spiritual advancement in life. So let's try and understand the rest of this about auspicious activities. So as I said, there's two, two sections of humanity, the regulated and non-regulated. So Srila Prabhupada explained those non-regulated as being the um, deities and the regulated as being the devatas. 
now when I was thinking, when you were speaking this morning, I was thinking most of us probably fall somewhere in between the Daitias and the Devitas. Hopefully we're not too much on the Daitya side and probably uh, certainly myself, I haven't achieved the Devita side. So, okay. Non-regulated, uh, the non-regulated section are full of animal prop propensities. So they're never auspicious. But on the path of auspiciousness, we have the three sections. Those who are followers of scriptural rules and regulations who are enjoying material prosperity. So Prabhupada further dis dis uh, divides that into ones who are fruit of workers and ones who do not have sense gratification. So of, of those followers of the rules and regulations, the ones who are after sense gratification, Prabhupada explains, uh, they're not going to get free from material existence. So therefore, they're not really on an auspicious path. It's a little bit auspicious because they're following rules and regulations, but it's not auspicious because it's, it's going to just keep them in the same cycle of birth and death. Uh, Krishna explains in the uh, third chapter how one goes up to the heavenly planets. And then once your pious results are uh, exhausted, then you come back down again onto the um, earthly planets. So, and then, um, so yeah, so they're not following in a tr truly auspicious path. The only auspicious activities are the those that lead one to liberation. And any activity which is not aimed at self-realization or liberation from the material body consumptive life is not at all auspicious. So the conclusion is in the next sentence, activity in Krishna consciousness is the only auspicious activity. And anyone who voluntarily accepts all bodily discomforts for the sake of making progress on the path of Krishna consciousness can be called a perfect transcendentalist under severe austerity. So our austerity is uh, not an austerity like the yogis. We don't have to sit in one place. We don't have to find exactly the right sitting place, not too elevated and not too low. We don't have to control the breath so much. We have the example of that Prabhupada uh, told us to sit, sit properly because we should uh, try and control um, the urges of the material body. We should try and control the material body while we're trying to chant. I think it was Gopal Prabhu who gave the example that actually Prabhupada was talking to him. He'd been practicing yoga and he was trying to do his best sitting in a great yoga posture. But then he got tired and he decided to stretch his legs. And just, just at that point, Prabhupada on that tape says, sit properly. So we can pretend to be yogis, but we're not actually yogis because we're not that austere. But our austerity, Srila Prabhupada calls it aus severe austerity. Our austerity is to follow um, the, the process that he's given us as sincerely as we can. And uh, it's aimed to be a 24 hour day process. Prabhupada concludes by saying that the Eightfold Yoga system is also ultimately directed towards Krishna consciousness. So therefore that is also auspicious. So Prabhupada explains in the beginning of this chapter that this Eightfold Yoga process is based on the Patanjali system. And Patanjali was act actually aiming at um, realization of the self in relation to the Supreme. Um, Prabhupada explains very carefully that Patanjali talks about transcendental enjoyment and that actually transcendental enjoyment necessitates dualism, at least in some form. Because if one merges in with the absolute truth, then there is no perceiver and there is nothing to perceive. So there is no enjoyment because if you cease to exist, you can't perceive the enjoyment. So this is the basic argument against impersonalism. If there is no perceiver and <laughs> there is no perception, therefore the, and there are none, and none there is simply negation of material miseries. So that we're studying in the Brihad Bhagavatam at the moment, um, how 
this impersonalism is simply um, getting rid of material miseries. There's actually no ananda at all. Whereas in the system of uh, bhakti yoga, we continue to exist <clears throat> as everybody continues to exist eternally as spirit souls, but we have an eternal relationship with the Supreme. So therefore there's, there's variety. Uh, Krishna has given us infer, infinite variety of expressions in devotional service and an infinite variety of perception. Our senses can also perceive in an infinite variety to enjoy that happiness and can keep on enjoying it. So in that way, <clears throat> the only true auspiciousness comes in pure devotional service. Now, I just want to take a little bit from Prabhupada gave a lecture in uh, 1969 in Los Angeles. He talked over several verses, including this one. But there are some, some nice points, uh, not directly related to this verse, but, but relating um, to this subject. So Prabhupada, in, just when the devotee is reading out the Bhagavad Gita, asking Arjuna, Arjuna asking the question, what happens if one does not attain perfection? So Prabhupada says, now before coming to the point of this self-realization, one must take it for granted that the, in the, as, as in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, that he is not the body. So this is the very beginning. Because and if we think we are the body, there is absolutely no hope of us becoming detached from wanting to make the body comfortable and trying to perfect the body. Even the yogis who are trying to perfect themselves with yoga exercises, they're still acting on the bodily platform. They're trying to perfect the body. They're trying to get a long life and such like. So we have to execute any yoga system with that aim. This life is eternal. This life is, this life in the material body is not eternal. The perfection of yoga system needs to get an eternal life, blissful life, and full of knowledge. That is perfection. So we have to execute any yoga system with that aim. Not that I attend some yoga class to reduce fat or keep my body fit for sense gratification. This is not the end of yoga system. Hmm. So, um, even a little endeavor on the transcendental path of bhakti yoga is especially suitable for this age because it is the direct method for God's realization. <clears throat> so, that we're trying to get as a conclusion that. Uh, any endeavor is very auspicious. <clears throat> now, in that, in that same verse, which was 637, Prabhupada in his purport was saying, um, the primary reason for one's uh, fall, failing is, to, is because one is not sufficiently serious about following the process. Now, Prabhupada, later on, he's talking about divine consciousness, which comes up in 644. Divine consciousness. We are preparing this consciousness, Krishna consciousness, divine consciousness. So just like he talks about an example that comes up in the 13th chapter, just like the aroma of a rose flower carried by the air, if the air passes through a rose garden, we experience rose flavor. So similarly, this flavor, this consciousness of what we, um, what we go through is carried with us in the subtle body. The material body is described as being either burned, buried, or eaten by animals. So the ultimate, the ultimate result of the body is either become ashes, dust, or stool. So Prabhupada explained, in, in, just like in India, the Hindus burn the body. The many of the Christians, they bury the body. And the Parsis, they, they just simply throw the bodies out for the vultures to eat. This is their way of trying to become detached from the body. 
So our consciousness we carries carries with us either as a smell of the roses according to to our good activities or the smell of stool according to our bad activities. And this uh, this makes our consciousness. Prabhupada several times quotes this Sangat Sanjayate Kama. According to our con association, our consciousness is developed. So if we continue, if we can continue to be trained up on this princess of principle of uh, yo the yoga principle, then we will get a consciousness that will take us to a good birth. And we will result in a good, good parents, good family, and we'll be, be able to come back to this same opportunity to progress again. So uh, explaining consciousness again, Prabhupada says, just like a child is born, he does not know how to smoke, how to drink, but by association, he becomes a drunkard, a smoker, intoxicated by association. Prabhupada says, just try to understand that the Supreme Lord, God, is pure and his kingdom is also pure. Anyone who wants to enter there, he must be pure. pure. That is very natural. So this is a very easy um, thing to understand. God is pure and the, the spiritual world is pure. So if we want to enter it, we have to purify ourselves. The same way that there are qualifications. If we want to go to America, then there are qualifications uh, to get to America. We have to come up to a certain standard. I remember helping my godbrother who wanted to go to America. And there's a standard. He had to get an, an, um, a reference that said he could spoke English. So I gave him a reference. I said he spoke useful English. And Gurmaj thought, my Gurmaj thought that I was exaggerating a little bit. I said, but we can communicate with each other. So it's useful. It's useful enough that, that I can talk to him and he can talk to me. But he was not a scholar in English at that time. So, but, but in order to get to America, you have to become qualified according to the standards that they set. So in order to get to the spiritual kingdom, we have to become qualified. And that standard is to become pure and to follow this process of purification. So, it's, um, so Prabhupada goes on to explain, you free yourself from material contamination. to become qualified to go back to Godhead. So the process, once you become free from material con con contamination, you do not, like, a, like in the yoga classes, they sit down for 15 minutes of so-called medication, and then they think they're purified, and then they go off to continue their material contamination. That is not the way to become pure, to go back to Godhead. He says, just if you, if you become, want to become cured from a certain type of disease, you have to follow the guidelines of the physician. You can't simply take the medicine and then go and do all the things you were doing before that made you get sick. Similarly, if you execute these prescribed methods, then you become freed from material contamination. Then you are actually situated for linking up, for making the connection with the Supreme. And Prabhupada goes on to talk about his devotees. This is the special, oh, our method is directly to connect you. This is the special gift of Lord Chaitanya, immediately to contact him with Krishna. Because ultimately you have come to that point, Krishna consciousness. So here, this method is that directly, immediately you will come. And it is practical also. Those who have no qualification, simply by coming in contact with the society, they have become highly advanced in Krishna consciousness. So we see that in, in practical example. The people who Prabhupada was preaching to when he first went to America had no material qualifications and they were breaking all the principles of devotional life. But yet because they come into his contact and association, they quickly advanced. And similarly from his disciples, they made more and more devotees by their association. Because they came advanced, they were giving their association to others. So in this age, we have to give chance to people to come into direct contact. No slow process will help them because life is very short and they're not much fortunate and the association is very bad. Therefore, direct contact. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Keva. Simply Krishna is presented in the form of his transcendental name and you contact him immediately by hearing. You have got natural instrument hearing. 
You simply hear Krishna and you become uncontaminated immediately. Okay, so that was what I wanted to read for today. Let's go back to our verse. So that summarizes basically um, the verse I'll read again. O son of Pritta, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, O son of Pritta, the transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. So we've discussed how the transcendentalist um, can be aspiring for liberation, but the only true um, aspiration can come from the one who is aspiring to re-establish his relationship with Krishna as a devotee. And the auspicious activities are activities that, that go towards this goal, not simply pious activities. So he does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the next. And in the last part, um, Krishna says, one who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. So, uh, just from um, Burijan proposed surrender unto me. He comments on this auspicious activities, Kalyana Krit, one engaged in auspicious activities, does not refer only to Ashtanga Yogi, but to anyone engaged in legitimate and thus auspicious activities on the spiritual path. So therefore Arjuna should not worry. As we said that auspicious activities must be aimed at this actual spiritual emancipation. And then the explanation of this last word, Tata, which means, which Prabhupada uh, translates as friend. So Srila Valadeva Vidyabhushan explains that by using the word Tata, my friend, Krishna is showing Arjuna special affection, addressing him as a loving father would address his son, or as a spiritual master, his intimate disciple. So here, this is an interesting point. Because um, now Krishna is addressing Arjuna as Tata, as a, as a, a special intimate uh, disciple. And remember back in the second chapter, Krishna chastised Arjuna. So, so much has changed in the relationship between them. Back then, Krishna had said, you're speaking words as if you're learned, but actually you don't know anything. You're actually a non-Aryan. So now the progression has come. Arjuna is uh, paying attention. He's asking intelligent questions. And he's uh, coming now into the relationship. Krishna is calling him Tata, which is an intimate, friendly relationship, um, a well-wishing type of relationship. So in this way, the relationship has changed. Arj uh, Arjuna is sincerely asking. He's, he's very interested in this process of Krishna consciousness. But he's worried about you know, this fact that the mind is so difficult to control. So the mind is also difficult for us to control. So we can take it, um, lessons from how Krishna has explained here in the sixth chapter. And uh, the seventh verse of the sixth chapter, Krishna explained that wherever the mind wanders, you simply bring it back onto your focus of meditation. So we take up this. And then in the 36th chapter, 36th verse, um, Krishna said um, that it's possible to control the mind by suitable practice and by the detachment. So um, those are very strong lessons for us from the sixth chapter. And uh, in the coming verses, we'll hear about the auspicious path that, for these devotees. So I'd like to stop now and invite any comments or questions. Um, you are allowed to unmute if you want to unmute, or you can write on the chat box. If nobody has any comments or questions, then um, we'll finish the class here.
thank you all very much for attending. Um, I hope something interesting has been there for you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Kijay.